si Army Adina pala sa Philippine Daily Inquirer. Hi, Anna. A lot of people were expecting you to join another pageant after your BDB stage or, or return to the BDB stage. So why did you choose to return to the Miss Philippines Earth pageant? What is it about this pageant that attracted you again? Miss Philippines Earth is really my first love. And you know that saying, the heart wants what it wants. So I feel like this is the time now. And um, like what I mentioned earlier with my introduction, the after the awarding or the the announcement of winners during Miss Philippines for 2021, I really told my team, we are going to go back to Miss Philippines Earth because this is really where my heart is. And um, you know, I've been very genuine about this since day one. I could have chosen other pageants out there. I could have chosen to join um, a pageant where I'm very much comfortable about. But you know, I chose this one because I'm just hardworking. And I'm very much committed, and I feel like those qualities that I have, you know, speak so much about being Miss Philippines Earth. And they need, um, you know, the organization is in need of a woman, of a queen, who has those same qualities. And I'm just super ready to offer myself to them. Um, how do you plan to use the crown? What kind of a Miss Philippines Earth winner can we expect you to become? Uh, an effective, hardworking, committed, passionate, and a purposeful one na hindi mapapagod kahit anong ibigay na, na, na activity. Very well said, Ms. Ilohan Laguna. The best of luck to you. Research. 
messages so that I can also share that to other people. Because I have this platform as a beauty queen and as a scientist, and I always aim to inspire other people with that kind of platform that I'm utilizing. Again, as a scientist, do you believe that um, we should be in a panic mode? We should be in a panic mode regarding um, climate change. Actually, yes. Because scientifically, we have already been given a 2030 deadline. It is by United Nations. This is something to be really scared about. We are now at hurt locker stage. It is now, um, you know, our world is now a code red, is now at code red alert status. So this is something that we should really be scared of. But the reason why we are gathered up around here is to bring about that kind of information. And the reason why I've been conducting seminars too for the past few days is to really make people aware of the repercussions of their actions so that they will start to take action and to you know, reverse course if needed and also um, change their lifestyle and also their mindset. So we have to take advantage of these kind of meetings and also these seminars to create the change. Thank you. Hi, um, marami dito at Dina, kinog ka na for a crown, and at your at your feet. Um, do you think that there's still some room, uh, room for improvements na kinakailangan mong gawin? And ano yun? Um, definitely, yes. There's still a lot of improvements for me because, you know, I'm never, uh, I'm never the complete, I'm never the complacent person, but I'm also never the perfect person. So there's always a room for improvement. That's why on a day-to-day -day basis, I uh, pack myself with uh, trainings, all the schedules, then I have all the free schedules to do something for myself and for the improvement of, improvement of myself. And actually, just after this um, press conference, I'll be having a Q&A training. At the same time, a passerella training, late night. So I'm just, um, I'm just proud to say that I'm really hardworking and I do not take anything for granted. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for you. My first question is, you know, Miss Philippines Earth is a national pageant. For most of us, we think that this is a pageant that's predictable. Um, this is a pageant that we know that we can go to the next level, so we don't have to go to the How do you stay grounded and how do you stay humble, knowing that you're surrounded by people who support you? You're also surrounded by fans who are really pushing you to be the next Miss Philippines Earth. So all positive things are surrounding you. How do you stay grounded and humble? I actually stay true to my core values and my strengths. Again, like my transcendental qualities of commitment, my passion, and my purpose, and really cementing it with consistency and sincerity. So that as I go along, I don't, you know, I stay grounded. I stay humble within me because I know that I'm actually not sure if Miss Philippines Earth is predictable because anything can happen, anyone can perform. But what what makes me stay grounded are my core values and how I am super motivated and how I am goal driven and focus driven all throughout the journey and focus on winning the crown. That's why I do all the trainings and the preparations too. As well as, you know, going around the sectors of Laguna conducting seminars, I expose myself to the community and those people that I get to be with, those people that I surround myself with are the same people who motivate me to focus on the goal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So my next question for you is um, about your OOPDs because as you know, I'm also someone who really talks about fashion. Now, um, you're really pushing for sustainability. But I noticed that these clothes are made to fit you. How sustainable are all of these creations? Will they be mass produced? May or they be produced in limited quantities? Because um, these clothes, are these clothes uh, items you've already owned? Or are these bought to be made into new items? Well, it is actually a mix of a lot of things. But mostly the ground is for sustainability. And we all know that when uh, you know when I was reading, of course I have to read a lot about the the different industries and the different sectors because I conduct seminars all over Laguna and I have many many audience to you know to inject my knowledge to them. So I realized that the fast fashion is actually. The
the third thirstiest industry that are needing a lot of water resources. So I stay away, I steer away, and I shy away from the fast fashion. And that is why instead of using, um, you know, the fast fashion items at the same time, my, my stylists actually have a lot of pieces in their wardrobe. So we make use of that. And instead of using the rhinestones, instead of using the gems, we make use of the sustainable items. For example, the CDs, um, the mop, the what else, uh, the tahong, those are much sustainable options because we can all understand that we have a lot of options out there, the gems, the stones, all of those. But if we can always regulate our use of that and opt for the sustainable route, then it is already a tangible proof that you are doing something for the environment. And that is what we are most proud of. Thank you. Hello, uh, Hello uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kim from the Daily Chippee. So, what did you do and where did you spend your whole week? I actually went back to my province. Um, as most of you know, I am from Sinaloa and Laguna. But we, we also have a house in Rizal. So, I spent my time there with my family. And I spent the whole week there with my family. Okay, and the next question is, what did you enjoy most about and what have you learned so far? Honestly, just the most precious time of spending it with my family doing the game night. I've missed them so much, and for the past few weeks, I've been really focused on the, on the Miss Philippines Earth journey, on my trainings, and I wasn't able to have a time with them. But because of the four days that we were together, I was able to reconnect to them, and also told them about the journey and the progress of my pageant career, and they're just super excited for me, for this journey. And last question, what's the secret with the Take 22 waistline? What's the secret uh, with the Take 22 waistline? It would have to be disciplined, cemented with consistency, that will be. Thank you. Hello, Paul. Hi, Anna. It's Christian from the Grand Philippines. Congratulations in advance. Uh, my question is, is it, you've been mentioning that you're uh, not uh, complacent on all aspects of the competition. You're very hard work and we can see that. I just want to know what's the last thing that you think about each time? The question that always pops out in my head at the end of the night is, have I done enough? Because since you know, since I'm a hardworking person, I always want to be able to impress other people too with the things that I'm doing, especially that I want to be able to leave a lasting legacy of something as I go along this journey for the crown. So that's it. I always think about, have I done enough? So if not, then I'll be doing something tomorrow that will add to that. Thank you. My uh, last question is, um, what is the true meaning of the crown? The true meaning of the crown for me is doing something for the environment and being able to leave a lasting legacy and impact, not for myself alone, but also for the people who are inhabiting the earth. I've always been the type of person who is very genuine with the things that she does. I am that person, and since I've been living with zero waste and a sustainable lifestyle ever since, that is the legacy that I want to impart to other people. And that's also the same reason why I've been very much hearted in conducting seminars and also inspiring people, injecting knowledge to them, especially to the children, because we owe it to them. The children are the future generation, and they are the linebackers and the pioneers. That is why they're also the reason why I'm very much hearted about everything. Thank you. I'm really excited for your question. <laughs> so, I have a question for you. So everyone is asking you, of course, about this Philippines Earth. I am really confident for you. I have a very good feeling. So I'm actually going to ask you something a little further in the future. I just had a conversation the other day with Ms. Karen Vasco. That the Philippines had just won um, the, the Miss Earth Crown three times in the last ten years. How confident are you of bringing, of bringing back a fourth crown for the Philippines? For the Philippines with the same span of time. <laughs> um, I would have to say 
I'm confident, but only because I work hard and because of my commitment. And I wouldn't have been able to be here, standing in front of you today, or sitting in front of you today, without my managers, without my, you know, without all of the people behind me, my bosses. And I wouldn't be here because of my transcendental qualities. So I'm just very much confident because of those aspects. But me alone, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I'm just very grateful for you all. I'm very happy. I'm, a lot of people notice that I'm a much fun person now. And I don't know why, but I feel like I, a lot of people have been telling me I'm more fun, I'm a little more nonchalant than usual. And I feel it is because of the personality development trainings that I've been doing at the same time, really surrounding myself with the most positive people that I can be around with. So I'm just really enjoying the journey and really doing all the hard work, and all the commitment, all the passion and the purpose within me to still, you know, at the same time, I am fun, but still hardworking enough to win the crown. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, first of all, Patrick Matthew, please. Um, you know, we've been claiming your victory for the Miss Philippines Earth, right? So, uh, should you be given an opportunity once you've crowned um, as Miss Philippines Earth, should you, should you be given an opportunity to somehow um, ask um, by the organization to somehow propose any changes to be done in the organization, what would that be? I'm actually very grateful that Miss Philippines Earth had done its, you know, they are perfect. The organization itself is already very perfect. But, you know, if I were to add something to the table, I would have to say, um, I would love to use the platform and the crowd to be able to do more and more projects because we can never have more projects. And if we add more projects to what they are offering to us now, then it will really contribute to something more progressive and more transformative, not only for the organization or the queens alone, but also for all the inhabitants of the earth. And those are the things all the people can really benefit from. Uh, my question is, granting that you are the newly appointed EPMR, Secretary, what pressing problems on the environment and natural resources that you will prioritize to solve with your team? I would have to say um, deforestation. And I feel like it's very much fitting, especially that the theme for this year of Miss Philippines Earth is about trees. At the same time, in Region 4A and my municipality, deforestation is still very widespread and it is a very disheartening reality. So what I want to propose is that pre perform or you know sustainable reforestation, get rid of deforestation and promote as well afforestation. If I were to become DNR, DANR secretary, I would have to promote those, those and also educate people about the importance of trees so that they will build they will build up their own intrinsic motivation because trees aren't just ornaments. They are the instruments of life progression as well as climbing amelioration. So we have to be able to protect all the trees and the forests that we have in this lifetime. Because after all, all our actions are in connection with every decision that we make across all time and place. And we have to ask ourselves at the end of the day, do we want a dead planet? Do we want a dead tree? Because we don't want that. And so we have to start taking action now. Thank you. Hi, Anna. Hello, sir. Hi, yeah. uh, My question for you is, uh, you're the most popular candidate for this year's Twitter. Uh, Ms. Peter is it an advantage or disadvantage for you? Before I answer that, I would just like to say thank you to you, Sir Pets, also to Eventology. 6.7 like, million views. I feel like the reason why I got the blue check verification on IG is because of you, so thank you. Okay, good thing on. Anyway, um, popularity, of course, in most pageantry is very much 
much important, not only for the girls alone, but because the popularity and the fame that they come with can also inspire other people. Now, um, I have built up my connection, I have built up my fan base, as well as people looking up to me. And the reason why it is an advantage for me is because I also get to tap them to attend my seminars. The reason why I am very much grateful for my followers too is because they can also help me tap, uh, you know, um, use the platform that I have to also support and empower Miss Philippines for the pageant. And now more than ever, we need to empower the kind of pageants that are very much relevant and very much fitting because we are all inhabitants of fear and we are all going to benefit from it. And not only the queens who are going to be crowned will benefit from it, but all of us who are here on this planet. Thank you. Thank you. What, what are you most afraid of Sasa finals? I am most afraid of tripping. <laughs> that is why, of course, I tell my team that I want to be able to practice the gown first before I step out on that. I want to be able to, you know, definitely practice the gown first because it's actually, you know, I'm very much afraid of tripping and nothing more than that because I know that I've been preparing for any for every other stuff out there. So tripping is basically a very unpredictable thing. It may be unforeseen, but it's completely predictable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, media friends.